And uh, with that, we're moving to the next uh, session, which is going to be a solo presentation, actually, delivered by Dr. Apostolos Nutsos. So Dr. Nutsos is director in EY Business Consulting. He is involved in sustainability projects in banking. And actually, he's going to deliver a very interesting talk on uh, the ESG practices of uh, European banks. Dr. Nutsos has a background in statistics and he holds a PhD from Imperial College. So Dr. Nutsos, welcome. And uh, the next 10 minutes are yours. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sheldopoulos, for the introduction. I'm uh, very happy actually to be here. And I think that there were a lot of interesting points from uh, previous speakers. I enjoyed uh, all the, the panels and discussions. In this short talk, as mentioned, we'll focus on ESG practice by European banking institutions. And uh, I'll try to, to, to share my screen uh, to help me with the, uh, with the talk. Uh, okay, so uh, based on a global uh, risk survey conducted by uh, EY and the International Institute of uh, Finance and published uh, towards the beginning of this year, uh, it seems that climate risk remains at the top of the agenda for uh, banking institutions. And actually, this is something that it was uh, reflected by responses both by global uh, financial institutions and also by, uh, by smaller banks that participated uh, uh, in this uh, survey. Uh, now, to gain some insights on these uh, responses and uh, how they were formulated, uh, we will look at two or three areas uh, of interest from this uh, same survey. Uh, on the business side, it seems that approximately 80% of institutions that participated uh, in, this, uh, in this survey stated that they have not yet established a robust uh, taxonomy uh, to identify and classify ESG-related uh, products and services. Uh, this is a critical point. I think it was uh, also um, mentioned thoroughly in previous uh, talks that uh, with these taxonomies, uh, banks can facilitate their strategy development, uh, definition of their targets, how this can, can then be cascaded uh, to business performance, and also it can support their actual business development through the development of products and different types of financing. Um, on the other hand, on the, on the risk side, um, two-thirds of the banks, almost two-thirds of the institutions that participated, stated that they have not yet uh, developed a complete understanding of how ESG risks affect their, uh, their exposures. And actually, this statement uh, is also linked and tied uh, to, the, um, to the way that they have uh, been developing their own uh, climate risk management teams. So it seems that only 15% uh, of uh, institutions in the survey stated that they have uh, developed a fully dedicated and fully staffed uh, climate risk team, with the rest of them being in the phase where they're assessing their options, uh, building the teams, uh, etc. Uh, two key points from this, uh, actually from this question, this, uh, these re responses were that uh, it seems uh, that the, the challenge in terms of upskilling, reskilling, and finding the right type of resources is evident in these results. Most of the banks are still uh, searching and trying to build uh, their climate uh, risk teams. And the second point of interest is that only very few uh, institutions, 6% uh, of, this, uh, of this sample, stated that they are not planning to develop a climate risk team, uh, a dedicated team for climate risks. Most likely they will handle uh, this, uh, this type of risk through the, uh, the teams that they have for more like credit, uh, market risk, etc. But it seems to be like uh, not uh, the, the norm or what uh, most institutions are, um, are doing. Uh, now, moving from how institutions assess uh, their current state in terms of uh, climate, environmental, and other uh, ESG risks uh, and factors, uh, let's move to how the, some of the regulators like uh, European Central Bank um, are assessing this, uh, the status of the financial, uh, financial institutions. Um, and their, their practices across several areas. Uh, actually, this is based on the thematic review that the European Central Bank published uh, towards the end of, uh, of last year, where it is evident that most of the areas, in most of the areas, uh, there are only basic practices that have been developed by the majority, the vast majority of institutions, um, or no practices at all compared to what the ECB uh, expects based on, on their guidelines. Actually, less than 5% um, it seems to have developed uh, best practices and being leaders uh, in, the, in their domain. Of course, there are variations in different areas, but the, the overall picture, I think, is uh, more or less uh, the same across areas. Um, 
some of the areas that the, and the points that the regulators uh, are expected to put uh, further pressure over the next uh, period. I think most of them were already referenced uh, before. Uh, for example, greenwashing, uh, further enhancements and the need for alignment in the disclosure uh, requirement. And finally, in terms of the climate risk management, uh, where it is expected that um, enhancement of uh, practice, especially in the area of incorporating climate scenario analysis, will be further uh, pursued. Uh, having uh, looked at this, uh, the, uh, an overall view of how institutions and how regulators assess the current state, uh, this part of the presentation will focus on evolving practice by banding institutions in three key areas. Uh, the first of them is strategy, and in particular, uh, decarbonization. Um, the, practically, the carbon footprint of banks is practically concentrating finance emissions, I, meaning their scope three emissions, um, and which are associated with their lending exposures, uh, their investments, etc. So to achieve net zero emissions and be aligned with, uh, with global uh, targets, uh, what are banks are practically need to do and pursue is develop their strategy roughly in, the, in four uh, main steps. The first one, which includes uh, key challenges in the area, is about collecting the relevant data that are needed. I mean, data from their clients, uh, data for different sectors uh, in terms of emissions, and perform what is sometimes called as baselining, which is practically the calculation of the current state in terms of emissions. Uh, having this information, then uh, and leveraging on sector-specific targets for emission uh, pathways, uh, banks develop short- and longer-term targets in these specific metrics and to gradually develop their strategy and how they will, uh, this strategy will set the course for business development. Uh, and as a last step, communicate with clients and engage based on these targets, but also with the public because the, the role of banks is pivotal um, uh, in this perspective in the overall economy, uh, taking into consideration the, the global targets on, uh, on decarbonization. Uh, after establishing uh, these uh, strategies and priorities, uh, in terms of business development, banks then can act toward the following directions. Uh, Deepen their understanding of uh, what is, a, is the status of their clients, and not meaning just uh, in terms of ratings, but having a, a deep um, a view, a clear view of what are the challenges, what are the opportunities uh, that, the client, uh, that the client faces, what are the risks in their areas, and how, what they need to do um, to counter and mitigate those risks. And then through develop some tools like development of innovative products, of new services, uh, they need to, which they need to extend to their clients and increase their overall sale in this new type of uh, market or uh, increasingly developing at least uh, type of uh, market. Finally, basing on the good understanding and basing on the tools, uh, services that have been uh, innovated, which to a large extent need to be tailored uh, to, to clients, uh, they can engage with them. Uh, they can propose uh, plans, they can propose specific products to them and gradually into a mutual benefit of both the bank, which will be satisfying their targets and their strategy, and to the client, uh, continue their uh, cooperation. Now, of course, the strategy and the business development needs to be supported by the right uh, risk management tools uh, and analysis. And that is a sector that is uh, still uh, developing to a very large extent and with a, with a very fast uh, pace. Uh, there are significant challenges, as we mentioned already, in terms of data, for example, in terms of physical data, data in terms of uh, obtaining the right data for transition planning pathways from the clients, but also getting the right type of information for climate scenarios. Uh, once these are set in place, then uh, the type of analysis needs to be developed. Now, this includes uh, new methodologies, uh, development of new kind of uh, models, which are based on this information, uh, but they, are, they need to be, they need to be <laughs> excuse me, they need to be developed on uh, innovative ways because uh, the type of data and the type of scenarios and the actual problems that need to be solved in this area uh, are different to what the usual risk management framework uh, encounters. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, analysis requires different kinds of expertise, knowledge, and I think this ties into the previous comments that uh, new skills uh, need to be developed by the risk management uh, teams uh, of these banks. Uh, this analysis then is integrated to risk management activities, to existing risk, risk management activities uh, by the banks. And finally, once this happens, it can be gradually um, developed and moved uh, to several use cases, uh, like the ones described earlier, strategic planning, pricing, uh, helping communication and engagement with the clients, etc. 
as a as a closing uh, remark i would like to highlight the interdependencies and need for coordination uh, when integrating esg in a range of activities for financial institutions such as strategy business uh, and risk management um, this integration needs to happen in sync across this area so that the target stake uh, can work efficiently uh, it's not possible to develop individually different areas without having this uh, this kind of uh, interconnection and that is also aligned uh, with uh, what most uh, large financial institutions are doing on developing central ESG teams to, to coordinate uh, this uh, this whole process. Thank you for your, for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nutsos. Um, maybe in the interest of time, uh, since the audience has not through questions for you yet, Maybe uh, we can revert after the panel when the next panel is going to have a Q&A with the audience in case there, there may be any questions for you. So once again, many thanks for your uh, presentation and, and discussion.